It's been a great Friday evening here at Xfinity Center. Bruno Fernando walking off the floor. Maryland 78-75 over Indiana. I'm Wayne Viner, Jeff Baxter, Bruce Posner, and Mace will be on in a moment. Guys, what'd you see tonight? Let Bruce. me tell you something, all right? Five and one, all right? With three of those games, road games. Mm -hmm. Five and one, this team's playing some ball. You got Wisconsin coming up Monday, then you hit the road, Jeff. Bruno Fernando, you got to talk about him. Well, let me tell you something. Bruno was so impressive tonight. I, I, I truly, and this is hard to say, I had some flashbacks really? on a couple of moves he did uh, based on some guys that played with me. Yeah. Uh, a couple of Tony Massenberg moves he did, a couple of Ben Coleman moves that he did, yeah. God rest his soul, and a couple of Lynn Bias moves that he did. I was very impressed, and I've been impressed with his progress throughout the season. Can you give us a minute to talk about Ben Coleman because he passed away this week. Was it sudden or was it building? Or so, as far as we're we're aware, and it's a group text with myself and some of our former teammates. Uh, it was sudden, but we do know that he did have diabetes. But we're not sure what how that the depth was with the with that disease. But he had it. Uh, what a great guy! Talk about him as a terp. As a terp. And as, a, as just a great guy, Ben used to cook dinner for Lenny and myself on Sundays. And he would tell us, sit down and shut up as if he was like our father, our big brother. And as you know, when Ben was here, Ben's a huge guy. And Ben was always one of those guys who was a leader. Um, he, he made us aggressive. He made us tough. And, and we're going to miss him as a person as well. I remember when he transferred in, I said, who? And then I saw him. And I went, wow. That guy can play an instant starter, instant center for Maryland. He he, what he did was he he made our our middle portion strong, and also he motivated Blinney as well as it relates to toughness, as well as obviously Herman and all those other guys there as well. But Ben Coleman was really a, a stud for us. Jeff, we were talking uh, before we went on the air here. Talk about the high basketball IQ of the freshmen. I think it's shocking how well they play and how smart they play. I am thoroughly impressed with all of the freshman players here at Maryland. I think um, um, Coach and his staff should be truly, truly uh, uh, blessed to have all of them because what's going on is that as Ant leaves and he progresses, the other ones are going to step in and, be, be, and do very well. So before we go to break here, we got to also bring up Cowan. Uh, he hit some shots. I think he had 24. Fernando had 25. But when Maryland wasn't going well, that combination turned the day. We were down by 14. You play point guard here. What's that feel like when the game's in your hands? When the game's in your hand and you have that control, it, it's it's amazing. But not everybody has the ability to, to take control like that. Ant has has progressed and been that way since he was a when he was at St. John's High School, and he's also progressed here at Maryland. He is willing to take the big shot, and more importantly, he knows when to take it. And I, and I love the way he plays. You know, it's funny. Wiggins hit a big three. Mm -hmm. I think it was the only shot he hit all game yep. but it was big and why he was wide open and the ball rotated to the post and went back high and there was nobody out there what's changed in this team all of a sudden they look they look like a real team you think it was just a growth process i'm not sure if it was just a growth project process or in fact the matter is also coaching because remember those guys are maturing and being coached daily and I think once it clicks that they're not in high school anymore that they have to play as a team it changes the game. And I know you have people waiting for you got one more question. Bruce and I were counting baskets and turnovers early. Maryland had seven baskets and seven turnovers. Maryland had eight baskets they called a turnover on a rebound the other end and that was the eighth turnover. They went the whole rest of the day, which is about three quarters that was of the like game. Thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. they went. Yeah. yeah, they went thirty minutes with no turnovers. That's tough to wow. do. Wow, whether you're at home or not. Yeah. All right. One last question. Yes. What would you do about these horrendous starts that Maryland has? It's almost every game. It, it's actually scary because they have to dig out of out of out of the the, the hole they put themselves in. That's a mental piece at this juncture, and, and the coaches are going to continue working with them. All yeah. right. Right, and they will. This is the Viner Four Gates post game show. Maryland still won 78 75. Great win. Great, Great job by the coach. Uh, Jeff, thanks for being on. Quite it's welcome. nice to have you back, and we will be welcome. back after this commercial message. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. The talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900, 301-251-2900.
or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on capitalsportsblog.com and terptalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Back on the floor at a happy Xfinity Center. We have all weekend to enjoy it. Coming in now is Mason. What would you see tonight? An Indiana team that came out with just more than Maryland, but as the game got deeper in, Maryland's inside game, inside out game kind of took it to Indiana, who definitely has, even though Juwan Morgan's a great player, he's still 6'7", 6'6". He just couldn't handle Bruno down low. But the one guy that really stuck out on the floor tonight had to be Romeo Langford for Indiana. That kid can play. Yes. 28 points, I think. Yeah, we'll get the Indiana stats in a moment. For Maryland, you look down the point total and the minutes and plus minus. Cowan, 24. Ayala, 14. Daryl Morsell at five points in 16 minutes. And then Bruno, the big numbers, 11 of 12 from the floor. He hit the three off the window. What was your view on that? Did it look like he meant to do it? Not really. No. No, no. He did. It was one of those no, 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 yes moments in a game. You have to shoot it. Though. All right. You, and he just did. like when Lindo got the ball down in the corner and it ended up being a three right. for Anthony Cowan, I wanted Lindo to take that shot. Every once in a while, and Jalen Smith tried and some other guys did too, you have to take that three. You got to make the other team respect your outside game. Maryland did just enough tonight with eight from 25 from three to really make that count. Look, you watch the game, the difference is, is Maryland is pounding the ball down to Bruno no matter what. And only good things are happening when they do. Right. He had, that's why they're winning. Yes. He had a plus uh, seven, which led Maryland, and he plays 36 minutes. Smith only had two points. He did get 10 rebounds, as Bruce brought up, 26 minutes. Wiggins, five. Uh, Sorrell Smith, three. He makes one three-pointer. Ayala? Uh, Ayala had 14 points, four 12, but, man, that dude can play some ball. The whole team did tonight. You know, in other words, Maryland was not at its best early. Oh, they no, that not at all. Down by 14, Indiana the ball, could have stretched it, and suddenly Maryland comes out in the second half, and I got a text from Jordan. It was 16 nothing Terps. Uh, well, you know what? Now they got to put their mind back together. They only have two days to rest, and they come back yep. with Wisconsin. And Wisconsin's going to pose a different challenge because they have the Ethan Happ. They have the guy that can handle move on, Let's take a look at what Indiana did. At one point, Langford was – Three of seven, and we said he's not doing much. And he finishes eight of 14 with 28 points. He plays 34 minutes. Morgan, you're right. He was effective, but not as much defensively. He got The good 14. thing about Langford is he's gone. All right? This guy's too good. He's in another world. He is really, really good. And he played like that tonight. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, he really, you know, I thought some of the shot selection by Indiana was horrendous as yeah. Maryland was taking okay. over. And before we get on, go ahead. Before we get on to the Wisconsin game, you want to say something about the way the game was officiated down low? Yeah, yeah. down low, anything went. You have to draw blood to get a foul. But up high, that would have gotten fouls. You. Yeah. Some of those fouls at the end, both ways. Yeah. You know, both ways. Mm. It was ridiculous. All right, give me some Wisconsin background. Yeah, well, Ethan Happ's still there. That's that's your first thing of note. They still have Brad Davis. It's really a team that will make Maryland play. I don't want to say a different game. I feel like Maryland can definitely adjust to the slower, the beat-you-down tempo. But Wisconsin's going to play a different kind of defense. They have that big man that can handle Bruno. Mm-hmm. Hey, 5-1, five and one, guys. 5-1 five and one five and one. To me, back to being ranked. the Wisconsin game really shows – if Jalen Smith can be effective, because you know it's going to be half and Fernando. He'll bounce well, back. The, Jalen him in the Smith post. Him was, as a post player, I mean, he not, was not so good tonight. 0 for 9 tonight. It Look, just it didn't come to him. The game had the same kind of games last year where he, it's a, he's a freshman. Perfect. It's just not going to happen that yeah. easy. And he was getting roughed up. There's no doubt about it. You know. But he was also getting roughed up and then fumbling the ball around. Like they, there were okay. some definitely some things you didn't want to see. But you got to point it out, Ricky Lindo. Yes. Again, He's earning the minutes. Step in and just give you that secondary post player. He can't really score yet, 
but he plays hard. He gets the rebounds. So he makes go enough back to, plays. Go back to the game on Tuesday night against Minnesota. Yep. Jalen Smith was off the charts. Yeah, yeah. He, he was, was fantastic. NBA we talked about on the radio on Wednesday. Go I back spent a couple minutes under the basket here to my right. There's Tony Massenberg off to the side there. Uh, and the physicality, being up close, right on top of it. I got some great pictures. We put a couple of them up before here, a few more. Man, it is a man's game down there, but Maryland prevails, 78-75. You want to get and catch that press conference? I don't know. I'm feeling quite tired, even though it's I'll not even that late. If you want. All right, well, I'll Bruce is going to put that video together. I'll send it to you. And uh, Bruce will be on the radio tomorrow morning.